How is the course of axial spondylar arthritis as seen on MRI? Hello, I'm Kai Herman. I'm a radiologist from Berlin and I'm specialized in musculoskeletal diseases. Today I'm going to show you case number four from the module Learn Axial Spondylar Arthritis Now in the Berlin Case Fear app. Here you can see an overview of these eight cases along with an introduction. And case four is very interesting as it reveals the course of the disease. So let's dive into this case. This case starts with an X-ray of the pelvis, but let's first check on the medical history of this patient. This is a 32-year-old woman and she presented with sacroiliac pain in both joints, predominantly on the right side at the first presentation, and she also presented with intermittent phases of fatigue. There was good response on Coxip, and uh, it's also important to note that three years ago she delivered a child. The CRP is slightly increased with uh, 9 mg per liter and each EP27 was tested positive. So let's check on this pelvic x-ray. As you see, it's a standard anterior posterior projection and we will now focus on the sacroiliac joints, which I will enlarge here. So if you compare the left side and the right side, you can see that on the right side there is irregular contour of the, of the joint. You see there are uh, ill-defined margins, both of the sacral side of the joint and the iliac side, and there's also some sclerosis. Due to the widening of the joint, particular in this area, I would say this is a grade three according to the modified New York criteria. On the left side, I don't see any very clear changes, so I would grade it grade zero or maybe grade one. Let's check on the MRI images on the first presentation of the case. We start with a T1 weighted scan. The, uh, just for a short repetition, T1 uh, can be recognized by a bright depiction of fat that you see especially in the subcutaneous region, but sometimes also in the fatty areas next to the bowel loops in the abdomen. And also you search for fluid, and fluid usually is well seen in the nucleus pulposus of the L5 S1 disc, as you see here. In this MRI uh, scan, it starts with slice number one in the anterior slice, anterior position. If we go through all the slices to the end, we see that the sacral canal is more in the later slices. So uh, this is now starting with the anterior slices in slices one and two, going up to slices 14 uh, to the posterior aspect of the joint. If we go to the central slices, we can see that there is some ill-defined contour on the right sacroiliac joint compared especially to the left joint. You see there is normal joint contour over here. And if we enlarge it a bit, maybe it's too much enlarged, we can see there is some irregular contour of, um, of the iliac bone and maybe also some sclerosis. So there are already structural lesions in this patient. Here especially there are some erosion seen. Um, there are some structural lesions, but there is no fatty change at this point. Maybe this small roundish area is there, but this corresponds to a lipoma in the bone. Okay, so this is the T1-weighted scan. Let's go to the next scan, which is a steel sequence. The steel sequence can always be recognized by a dark depiction of the subcutaneous fat and a bright depiction of the nucleus pulposus. Here you see that clearly the right sacroiliac joint is inflamed and 
this inflammation is characterized by bone marrow edema, which is the predominant finding. If we go to uh, a deeper look in this slice number nine, we can see there is bone marrow edema in the sacral bone and also corresponding in the iliac bone. The bone marrow edema can have different signal intensities. You see the more uh, bright signal here in the central part of this bone marrow edema and it's uh, faded away here in the outer area of the bone marrow. It is, it is of note that uh, you can all also see the erosion a little bit here because in this bright bone marrow the defect in the contour uh, has a very good contrast. And another finding can be seen which is the bright signal inside the joint which corresponds to inflammation in the joint. Um, Usually you only see it after gadolinium injection, but here you see it already on the stir sequence. So the fluid sign inside the joint is also uh, quite typical for active axial spondylar arthritis. Sometimes this bone marrow edema is also designated as osteitis. Osteitis is a, a non-bacterial inflammation of the bone. And, uh, but the ESAS group has decided to designate this finding as a bone marrow edema. Okay, so this is a uh, very active sacroilitis. If we, if we compare it to the left side, there is no sacroilitis at all on the left side. So the patient um, was treated with uh, NSAID therapy and during this treatment the BASTI decreased significantly and was only 1.2 up in presentation after 12 months. So after 12 months we performed another MRI scan and now it's very interesting because um, on the right side we now see bright signal in the bone marrow that is so-called a fatty lesion or fatty metaplasia. So fatty lesion is the correct term. And we also see uh, bright lines inside the joint, which corresponds to backfill. There are these erosions here, and we will now compare these erosions with the um, first presentation. So let's start the split screen and I will place the first MRI T1 on the left side and uh, the second MRI scan on the right side. And when we uh, set our slices to more or less the same, then you can see uh, that's more or less the same. So if we enlarge this and here to more or less the same uh, magnification factor, you can see there were some, scler some sclerosis and also erosions in the iliac bone over here. And if we now compare it uh, to the follow-up scan, we see that uh, in, uh, at, at, uh, at first there is now bright signal and it was dark here, so there is fat, uh, more fat content in the bone marrow. And also we see that these erosions are more smooth now. You have difficulty seeing them. And uh, if you compare the signal inside the joint cleft, there's now high signal intensity in the joint cleft. And this is called uh, the backfill sign. So there is a repair tissue growing into this joint. And um, this is a very specific sign of external spondyloarthritis. So what happened with the bone marrow edema? If we have a look at the baseline scan here and uh, the follow-up scan over here, so you can see the bone marrow edema is now completely resolved. But some residual inflammation remains, for instance, this small bright area over here. And if you look carefully, you can also see a little bit of bone edema here in the 
Aliac bone more in the anterior aspect. If you compare that here, that's more or less this area. So it's a residual edema. And also on the posterior aspect, there might be some uh, strange uh, increased signal over here in the ligaments posterior of the joint. If you compare it to the uh, baseline scan, there was no bright signal over here. So this would be some sort of encesitis in the interosseous ligaments. So there is still some inflammation, but of course it's more or less irrelevant. Uh, uh, there's very good uh, response to the therapy after one year. Okay, the patient, uh, as you see, uh, did not stop, uh, did not stop uh, coming to our uh, outpatient department. There was another scan performed after two years. And uh, what's written here, the patient uh, did again complain of increased pain in the area of the sacroiliac joints and now radiating into the left leg. And also the basta is now increased again to 4.0. So let's check on the findings. So we have here again a T1 weighted scan and a stir. So let's check the stir sequence first because if the patient has pain, usually you start checking the stir sequence first because there you see the active inflammatory changes. If we focus on the right side, there is no inflammation there comparable to the uh, scan after one year, which I will present over here. So you see there was no inflammation here. Again, there's no inflammation uh, at this point, but we can now see this bright area here. And in the two scans before, there was no inflammation on the left joint. So if we enlarge it a bit, we see this ill-defined bright signal in the sacral bone and also in the iliac bone. So there is some new inflammation. There's even fluid inside the joint. There's new inflammation in the left sacroiliac joint that explains the uh, complaints of the patient. And that is uh, new compared to the prior scans. Again, one look at the uh, T1 weighted scan of this last MRI. We see still there is some smooth erosions and fat uh, lesions on the um, on the right side and on the left side there is now this uh, ill-defined decrease of signal which is due to the edema over here. So you see this is a rather uh, complex course of the disease. It is uh, not so infrequent in our experience that we have patients having good response to treatment, almost uh, inactive, and then suddenly they flare again and get new inflammation. And therefore, this is very interesting to study this case uh, in, in the course of three years. In our app, of course, we have explained um, the uh, findings in detail, so you can read uh, them again. We also had a, a provide a list of the findings that uh, we describe. And it's also possible to uh, check on the findings in detail with the overlay button. That means uh, you can, uh, you can uh, get explanations inside the images on which finding is what. And uh, I highly recommend checking out uh, our module on axial spondyloarthritis. I hope you found this in-depth discussion useful. You can take it for granted that I will prepare more cases in the upcoming weeks. Meanwhile, please check out our Berlin Case Viewer app. This is available for the iPhone, for iPad, for the Mac and also for Android smartphones. And thank you for watching and bye bye.